This is a review of Manly Palmer Hall's little book, Magic, a Treatise on Esoteric Ethics. Part 1. Children of the False Darkness. In this essay, Hall comments on the moral and ethical responsibilities associated with working with magical practices and disciplines. He discusses the idea that those who work with invisible forces and the hidden side of life and nature sometimes abuse the powers that are gained from this type of work. And he proposes a concise code of ethics and con concise code of rules, which he maintains should be followed by those who choose to explore natural mysteries associated with the magical arts, in order that what he calls the binding of invisible energies for the advancement of personal ambitions may be avoided. Part 1 is called Children of the False Darkness. Hall begins by stating that it is incorrect to term the perversion of occult power black magic. Black, he says, does not denote evil. In fact, it is the source of all being, and all consciousness and light are born out of the chaotic blackness of absolute intelligence. Dark is simply unmeasured possibility, and both light and dark exist together in the human soul in this third density world of duality. Those humans who work with this black substance are not evil, but the sons of what Hall calls the Black Father, the sons of Saturn. Since all humans are born out of this chaos of darkness, we have no right, he says, to term it evil. It is man's work on this earth to shape the stone of his soul, as a miner removes a diamond from black carbon so that it may be polished and reflect light. Hall writes that the dark lords of Saturn are the builders of the first dawn, the morning of blackness, and it is from these that are born the first sparks of consciousness. They are what he describes as mind-born who were delivered from the brain and mouth of Brahma. The diagram on this slide illustrates the four births which have come out of the body of Brahm, the unknown blackness. These are man's physical body, his etheric body, his astral body, and his mental body. These four births make up the macrocosmic man, and this is how Hall labels them. The physical body is man, the earthborn. The etheric body is Chiron, the waterborn. The astral body is Lucifer, the fireborn, and the mental body is Satan, the airborn. Of this darkness, there exists one that is false and one that is true. The true darkness is like the natural darkness and is the base of all things. The false darkness, on the other hand, results from the misuse of the light that emanates from the natural darkness. It represents a perversion of this force. Hall describes the devil as the archetype of this perversion and says he is not a son of Saturn, but a son of man. The true darkness is dimensionless, and it is the foundation of all that is, has been, or ever will be. It forms the veil that hides the true reality of all creation. Hall calls this absolute spirit. It represents an unawakened possibility. It has no form and therefore requires no vehicle. The false darkness, on the other hand, is absolute crystallization. False darkness is a perversion of opportunity. The perversion of power emanates from free will choice, for if there is no opportunity, then there can be no perversion. Thus, humans are provided with the ability to choose. If they choose the false darkness, they will reap the consequences of that choice. Because this world is one of duality, light and darkness are inseparable. The work of the human is to accept and understand this. Because humans are intelligent beings, the ability to reason is crucial in carrying out this work. When intelligent humans undertake the work of comprehending this and applying it, they can learn of all of the power that they possess within themselves. Hall cautions, however, that with increasing knowledge comes great responsibility. The evolution of the soul requires that humans conquer temptation and in the process build strength of character and will. If this is not achieved, humans can become dangerous creatures, capable of abusing the god powers that lie dormant within them. That, says Hall, is when a black magician is created. 
The diagram on this slide is Hall's illustration of what he calls the forking of the ways. It represents the choice that the human faces as he or she embarks upon either the right-hand path or the left-hand path. This path of choice passes through the four creations of Brahma, the physical worlds, the ethereal plane, the astral plane, and the mental plane. At the point where the astral plane and the mental plane intersect, man must select his choice of path. This is the point at which the paths of magic divide, black magic on the left and white magic on the right. The difference between the two lies in the way in which either immortality is attained or crystallization. Though both lead to darkness, the right-hand path to the immortal darkness of divine union, and the left-hand path to the mortal darkness of divine annihilation. The power of choice is God's greatest gift to man and the cause of all suffering. The final part, one, final part of part one of Hall's essay offers the following definitions of magic. Magic is the art of manipulating the unseen forces of nature. A magician is someone who is capable of juggling the four elements or bodies and can consciously mold the substances of matter of the material worlds. Gray magic is defined as the unconscious or subconscious perversion of power, while yellow magic is the failure to learn how to prevent the perversion of power. Black magic is the use of spiritual powers to gratify animal or selfish tendencies. White magic is the right use of spiritual power, consciously and objectively. Hall further develops this section by explaining that motive is the key to distinguishing between the white magician and the black magician. He says that the white magician serves humanity, demonstrates sincerity of motive, and lives in accordance with this. Thus, he is worthy to be tested with the wand of the magus, which represents the great arcane knowledge, that which is known or understood by very few, and is mysterious, secret, esoteric, and revealed only to the true initiate. The white magician's motto is, right is might, or survival of all. The white magician serves the whole of humanity. The black magician, however, attempts to gain authority over and control spiritual powers by means of force. He seeks spiritual power in order to serve himself, rather than the whole of humanity. His motto is might is right, or survival of the fittest. Because the black magician has what Hall explains as no legitimate means of securing his power, he must wander the earth and take from others that vital energy that he needs to survive. This, then, is the definition of a psychic vampire. Hall notes that those who are not consciously on the white path are possible victims of these individuals, who he terms monsters of iniquity. These monsters invoke demons who serve them and reject natural law in order to serve only themselves. According to Hall, black magicians may wield spiritual powers, but their hearts are dead and their minds have been taken over. They have lost the good within themselves. Because they have destroyed their own consciousness, they do evil for the joy of it. Hall ends his commentary on Children of the False Darkness with this statement. Spirit is matter inverted, and matter is spirit inverted. The beast is God defiled. In part two of Hall's Magic, a treatise on esoteric ethics, he discusses the power of demons, and that will be the topic of the next video.